Ladies and gentlemen, aviation geeks and frequent flyers, my name is David and we're in Stockholm, Sweden right now because today we're flying on one of the longest 737 MAX flights in the world. First, we're flying up from Stockholm to Reykjavik, Iceland, and then from there we're heading all the way to Seattle, Washington, a flight that clocks in at over seven hours and is one of the longest ones in the world on this type of aircraft. So I'm very curious to see what it's like to fly on the new 737 MAX of Iceland Air on such a long flight. And if you enjoy these videos about air travel, do subscribe to our channel. If you want to follow our flights along life as they happen, do follow us on Instagram. And if you want to hear me rant about different airlines and airports, do follow me on Twitter as well. So without further ado, let's head to the terminal and let's fly to Iceland. Arlanda is one of my favorite airports in Europe to fly long haul from, as it doesn't just offer extremely cheap fares all the time, but also has plenty of high quality airport hotels, which are easily reachable with a free shuttle bus in case you need to spend the night. This includes the legendary Jumbo Hostel, a hotel inside a Boeing 747-200 that I had the honor of staying in a couple of years ago. Inside the engine, actually. Check out that video as well if you want to see the whole thing. For now, we're on our way to Iceland, aboard a much smaller but considerably more modern aircraft, a 2018 built Boeing 737 MAX 8, appropriately registered TF ICE, already wearing Iceland Air's new livery. I'm not quite sure what to think of it, do you like the new livery? Regardless of aesthetics, I think it fits Iceland Air's brand quite well, conveying a picture of affordability, as the airline is a hybrid carrier, not quite low cost, but certainly not a full service airline either. You'll see what I mean later into the video. The aircraft has just arrived from Reykjavik and is now being cleaned, and of course, you have to unload all of the frozen Icelandic fish. Thank you. The Boeing 737 MAX 8 has four rows of business class up front, featuring a 2-2 configuration. Iceland Air calls this the Saga class. If you want to know more about it, check out fellow aviation YouTuber Jeb Brooks' video about Saga class on Iceland Air's inaugural flight to Raleigh, North Carolina earlier this summer. Behind that you will find the standard 3-3 configured economy class. All of Iceland Air's planes are fitted with personal entertainment screens at every seat with the exception of the tiny Dash A's, obviously. My seat on this three-hour flight to Reykjavik is 27F. The headrests are adjustable, both vertically as well as on the sides. The entertainment screens are impressively large, and so is the legroom. Compared to full-service carriers, it might be considered average, but since Iceland Air is a hybrid carrier, I say it's in line with what I expected, and being 180 centimeters tall, I'm totally fine with that. There's also a standard tray table, as well as a USB port beneath the screen with which you can charge small electronic devices, and the audio port for the headphones. The headphones, by the way, are not free on Iceland Air. They have to be purchased for 3 euros, or, you know, you can just bring your own. There are no universal power outlets in economy class on hashtag Iceland Air. After de-icing at the gate, which saves us some time and fuel compared to being de-iced on our way to the runway, it was time to leave snowy Stockholm. Mobile phones and any other electrical devices must be turned off or set to flight mode. Please study the safety instruction cards placed in the seat pocket in front of you. This Boeing 737 aircraft has eight emergency exits.
After takeoff, the crew offered a beverage service. Selected non-alcoholic beverages are free on Iceland Air, including basic sodas, tea, coffee, water, and some juices. Iceland Air does not provide free in-flight meals on any of their flights, but they have a great selection of hot and cold snacks available for purchase on board, as well as hot dishes available to pre-order, which I did for my connecting flight to Seattle. Very notable is Iceland Air's curated selection of gins. Six different ones are available for purchase, so gin lovers can drink to their heart's content. Two different types of tonic water are offered as well. Let's take a look at what the in-flight entertainment system has to offer. There is an okay selection of movies and TV shows. Not too impressive, but it's nice to have them available for free. Some other hybrid carriers actually charge for the use of their in-flight entertainment system, airlines such as Fly Dubai or Condor. So that's certainly a plus for Iceland Air. Wi-Fi is offered for purchase in all of their planes, again except the small Dash 8s. On the 737 MAX, they have a 10 euro flat rate for the entire flight. As we started our descent, the mighty Icelandic glaciers revealed themselves. What a breathtaking view. Now it's time for us to leave the aircraft and for the next passengers to get on and the next frozen fish. Iceland Air's network is designed so that most of their flights from Europe arrive at the same time and then all of their flights leave for North America, perfect for connecting. This also means that twice a day the small airport terminal here is buzzing with travelers. After passing passport control, effectively leaving the Schengen area, I got some snacks for the flight. This is one way how the Icelandic aviation industry enables such affordable flights. Everything at Keflavik airport is insanely expensive. But I have to admit, telling people how long their flights are going to be and knowing they don't get food on those flights, it's a smart marketing move from the airport right here. I got some Kia pudding, a vegan wrap and a smoothie. Ended up at 2,600 Icelandic krona or around 19 euros. Quite painful. Then it was time to board our connecting flight to Seattle, this time operated by the larger 737 MAX 9, a 2019 built one, registered TF-ICA. The plane has the same cabin as the previous one, with Saga class seats in the front, Hello. the same economy class seats in the back. This time I'm in 21F. On this flight, pillows were provided on every seat and blankets were available upon request. Due to the short turnaround time in Reykjavik, cleanliness sometimes comes short, but that's where the sanitizing wipes provided at boarding come in handy. Now it's time for our 7 hour trip to Seattle, one of the world's longest 737 MAX flights.
Og þetta er að sjálfsögðu reyklaust flug og þá einni við um allar rafsíkarettur. Í neyða tilfelli er mikilvægt að fjarlæga andinskrími fyrst áður en svo. Soon after takeoff, we entered Greenlandic airspace, and that came with even more breathtaking views. It's absolutely crazy to think that humans managed to find a way to cross the massive Atlantic Ocean in mere hours, flying 10 kilometers above this polar desert in a pressurized metal tube, eating lasagna. Yes, lunch was just served. I pre-ordered this meal on Iceland Air's website before the flight, which cost 19 US dollars. The main dish was a classic lasagna, which was very tasty. It was served alongside a salad with mozzarella and tomatoes, as well as this tiramisu for dessert. As on the previous flight, non-alcoholic beverages were provided for free. I was really impressed with the quality and taste of the meal, which was just flawless. For $19, I would have appreciated maybe a bread roll with butter or some crackers with cheese alongside the meal, but overall I think the price is very fair especially considering how much food costs on the ground at Keflavik Airport. After that, it was smooth sailing, just watching some movies, taking a nap, and not really much more to note. Entertainment and Wi-Fi were available again, the same as on the previous flight. And just like that, seven hours had passed and we were descending into cloudy Seattle. It's amazing how with a meal, in-flight entertainment, comfortable seats, how little difference there is between flying long haul on a twin aisle jet compared to a single aisle plane like a 737 MAX. I'm telling you, this is the future of transatlantic air travel if you like it or not. 737s and A321LRs are cheaper, not just in total cost, but also in per seat cost, both to acquire as well as to operate. It's not insignificant that these planes have a seat to aisle ratio of 6 to 1, meaning 6 seats per aisle. Even the biggest widebody aircraft only manages 1 to 5, in other words, 10 seats and 2 aisles. This means that percentage-wise more of the cabin is dedicated to seats, meaning you have to take less airplane, less weight with you per passenger, making these planes incredibly economical. And with the range as possible these days, single aisle jets will transform transatlantic air travel as we know it, making routes possible that wouldn't have been 10 years ago. We're already seeing it with flights like New York to Porto on the A321LR, which we have covered before as well. Exciting times, and Iceland Air is likely one of the biggest profiteers from this development, offering a solid product with cuts in the right places to make it affordable. When pre-ordering a meal, the quality difference to a mainline carrier is small, but they can still deliver great connections at an affordable price. An airline I would not hesitate to fly again, and one I would love to see at my hometown airport in Vienna. Wink wink Iceland Air. Before disembarking, we only have to wait for our parking position to become available. Ironically, it's not occupied by a plane, simply by some ground vehicles. Don't have enough space to park them, huh, SeaTech Airport? Anyway, with that, I want to thank you for watching and coming along today's journey. 
I hope you enjoyed it and will come along again next week on another trip. If you want to support our mission to deliver no-nonsense reviews of as many different airlines as possible, please make sure you are subscribed to our channel, or possibly even consider becoming a paid channel member. With as little as 24 euros per year, that's the cost of a cheap cup of coffee per month, you can directly support our work. Without amazing people like all of these, we wouldn't be able to continuously add new airlines to our channel and cover exciting routes like the one today. Thank you again for watching and have a great rest of your day.